FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. That was kind of lame air drums. You think? Yeah. You got to... Well, yeah, but I got this studio it. camera on me, so I don't want to be too okay. animated oh, okay. over yeah, here, you know? Like, you gotta get into if I was it. at home, my arms would be up here and everything. <laughs> yeah, you got to get into it more than that. <laughs> Not used to having somebody here looking at me either, <laughs> other than Liz. Uh, let me see here. Listen to Donald Trump on... Colin Kaepernick. Uh, I think it's personally not a good thing. I think it's I think it's a terrible thing. Donald Trump taking to the radio Monday, blasting Kaepernick. Maybe you should find a country that works better for him. Let him try. <laughs> it won't happen. <laughs> Get the hell out. I'm waiting for him to say. Come on, Colin. Did, did, oh. no, 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 I've got that drop. Oh. But uh, uh, what I what my point is is mm. that Barbara Streisand claims she's going to leave the country. If Donald Trump wins. So if Donald Trump wins, maybe we could get rid of Colin Kaepernick and Barbara Streisand all at the same time. What's that old saying? Let the doorknob hit you where the good Lord, <laughs> the Lord split, split you. you. That's right. What the hell do you have to lose? That's right. There you go. See? Um, what's your take on uh, Colin Kaepernick and, and uh, his $19 million motivation here? You, you I, know, I, I think know. Colin Kaepernick is demonstrating why the United States is the greatest country in the world. That he can... Uh, take this stance, and he doesn't have to worry about the secret police coming in the middle of the night and kicking in his door or, you know, being fined for saying something by speech police. You know, I may not agree with it, and, uh, you know, if he decides to sacrifice his career and any future endorsements he may have had, you know, that's his business. Uh, I think the young man is suffering from some cultural and some racial identity issues, and I think they're fomenting themselves out uh, in, in this way publicly. So, but if that's his right, if that's what he wants to do, fine. You know, if people want to criticize him, they should they should do that too. But you know, remember this is America, and you know, he'll pay a consequence for this stand. See, suffering from some white parent guilt. Ah, uh, you said that, not me. <laughs> You said that. I just, I just I wondered. Just he's got I mean, he was raised by a couple of white people. And, and he's biracial. So yeah. I, I think with this whole, I think America's unfair and all that, and he's had kind of a privileged upbringing and is living a good life. I think he's suffering from some cultural, racial there identity There are issues. rumors that his girlfriend uh, is pretty active in the BLM movement and might have, um, I don't know, influenced him. Well... You know, what, a, you, what were you saying about Adam and Eve? Really? I, 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 Come I on, didn't say that on air. I was like, <laughs> well, you know, Eve gave Adam the apple. There so. you go. I'm just telling you, you might might have been led astray just a little bit yeah. there. Liz isn't saying a word over yeah, there. She's, she's mad just at looking me at me. Now. Let's go I'm to cut. I'm not mad. Let's go That's to cut number one. True. <laughs> Let's go to cut number one. This is one of uh, Colin Kaepernick's uh, teammates who who was wearing an American Sniper T-shirt when he did this interview. I wasn't surprised. I was upset. And disappointed. I mean, you know, like I had said earlier, that flag gives you the right to do whatever you want. And I understand that. And Anquan said that, and I agree with that. But at the same time, you have to show some respect, especially in this position that we're in where we're playing a game for a living. And, you know, it's almost like disrespectful to, you know, you see all these pictures of these veterans that have no legs and they're standing up in their wheelchair. You know, and I had a brother that served and he lost friends and I know how much it means to him and it's just, it's shameful. I'm a very emotional person. So I think if I had known that, my emotions would have been rolling, we probably would have had a problem on the sideline. Is a former uh, 49er who plays for Jacksonville now. I think what we're going to end up seeing is uh, some older African Americans within the NFL are going to be asked to sit down and talk to him and, you know, kind of set him straight that, look, you're living a very privileged life and you're doing something that a lot of people would like to do and your window for that success and to achieve this money and do this is very short and you need to really reevaluate what you're doing and decide do you want to play in the NFL. Well, he they may make that decision for him from what I read. <laughs> exactly. He may get cut. Maybe he'll go to the Cowboys. Well, they could use some quarterback yes, help. Their quarterback guy, help. he's a wimp. He hurt his back or something, didn't he? Uh, offensive line troubles. No, I thought I'm, Tony Romo got hurt. I he did, he had an I, but I'm blaming it on the offensive oh, line. Oh, I see. You know, you All right. You got to protect your $100 million quarterback. Yeah. That's the first rule in the NFL. That's true. Protect your $100 million quarterback. I, saw, I heard that they got in trouble for reported some strange white substance on the field down there in Dallas. Did you hear that? Yeah. I don't, Ended up being the end zone. That's an old meme. Oh! 
That's a, I'm just don't kidding. Don't tell you. me you just discovered that meme. <laughs> I did not just discover it. The anti cowboy it fans ago. post that on my <laughs> on my Facebook wall every year. So I, I originally heard that about the Rams years ago. Remember <laughs> yeah, that? <yeah>. Rams. <laughs> Oh, our former team. Yeah, our former yeah, team. Yeah. Our former the team. The Los Angeles Rams. I have lost. Can I just tell you this? I, I was sitting home the other night, and I there was a preseason game on. It was the Bengals and somebody. And I sat down there. I'm like, oh, football. And I sat down there. Yeah. And I just found myself uninterested in it. Yeah. I, I couldn't. Now, I know it's two teams that. I, I mean, I used to live in Cincinnati. At one time, I was a huge Bengals fan. But now really? I don't know any of the players and. It's just it's different not having an NFL team here. It, it's it just is. weird. I mean, I always rooted for the Rams, even though they were pathetically bad in the last couple of years. And it hurts me with this whole situation that once St. Louis has lost a team, not once but twice, they ripped our hearts out. And the thing that just the knife in the back to me is that Jerry Jones, Cowboys owner, was one of the main people that instigated the Rams moving to L.A. because he's greedy and it enriches all of the owners and they make a ton of money. That was the only uh, inspiration for it. Yeah. And I, I, I don't think I'll, you know, I've, I'm just beginning to forgive Jerry Jones for getting rid of uh, uh, the, the uh, coach, Jimmy Johnson. I've just gotten over just, that. That's been a while. Yeah, so yeah. now he goes and does this. May not ever forgive him. Hey, I understand having lingering bad feelings yes. like that like to this day i dislike rick patino because <laughs> uh, 12 or 13 years ago or whenever it was he decided to come back and go to our arch rival loserville yeah. instead of uh going back to kentucky i hate the steelers from the 70s because they beat the cowboys in two super bowls <laughs> and in both games it was by four points i hate the steelers to who the could, day who could hate terry bradshaw and franco harris come on dallas cowboys oh man. i see we lost, well that's we true. lost two super bowls to that's them. true that's true it's because you had an old quarterback Hey. His birthday was Sunday. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. They had a highlight film on Facebook. Oh, that. nice. That Beautiful. must have been short. Oh. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Oh, oh. but um, Tony, thanks for calling into the program. Tony, are you there? I'm here. Yeah, go ahead. Mark, I truly do get it. <laughs> thanks. I, I have to disagree with uh, the guy you're talking with. Chris? Here. And I, I really do understand there's a freedom of speech and all that. But when you sign into the NFL, they have very strict rules and guidelines. You have to dress a certain way. You have to act a certain way. And, I mean, Dallas couldn't even put ribbons on their helmet when the police officers got shot. So, as far as I see it, when you're in the NFL, that's, that's your deal. You don't have freedom of speech. Well, I suspect if Colin Kaepernick decided he wanted to put a BLM emblem on his shirt, they would have told him no to that too. Well, I mean, even in your even in your contract, it probably has an, a clause in there where you you have to conduct yourself in such a manner. Absolutely, a morals clause. You bet. Well, the NFL's got the same thing, so you know he can whine all he wants, but I think he was wrong. Yep. Well, uh, Tony, I appreciate the call. Have yeah, a good one, Mark. No, absolutely. Thank, thanks for making your point. Yeah, I I defend his right to free speech. I just question whether or not he couldn't have done it in a different way, right? Why does he have to try to offend every God fearing flag waver in America? If you've got if you've got a bully pulpit like that, you're rich. You could go spend a million dollars a year in your community to try to better it somehow. And when you call a news conference, cameras are going to show up. D do that stuff on your off time. He'd still get lots of airtime for it, and he can say whatever he wants. I just think he picked a particularly bad PR move to do it the way he did it. I'm not going to tell any man how to express his First Amendment right, even if I disagree with it. Right. Uh, when I went to the Donald Trump rally down here, just because I went as an observer, this is prior to the race being over in the primary, I went to observe what was happening. And those idiots that had lined up down there to protest in their Guy Fawkes masks, <laughs> uh, one of them had an American flag. He was trying to burn it. He was on the ground. He was dragging it around and jumping up and down and stomping on it, trying to incite the crowd. And he managed to get a couple of people pretty worked up. You know, I'd rather he's an idiot. I'd rather I, can, I'd rather view that than to see the police come in jack boots and arrest them and dragging them off. And right. They're, and we don't hear from them for three or four months and they come out bruised. And, you know, so 
It's America. M E R I C A. It's America. It's America. Welcome to America. It's America. I'm sorry, I said it wrong. It's America. <laughs> Welcome to America. America. <clears throat> yeah, Co- Colin. Uh, Colin has stepped in it. Yeah, he certainly. Does. There, there's no he doubt can about that. Forget about any endorsements in the future. I would or agree. Any for for the rest of his career. Career is either going to be over or he's going to Dallas. He, and, oh, one of the two, don't you think? I take him right now. Lie after lie. After lies. See, they're desperate down there in Dallas this I year. But at it. least they've got football and we don't. Yeah. Chris Arps, thank you. Thank you. Always a pleasure. 314-969-9797. We'll get to more of your phone calls coming up. We're going to talk to John Decker from Fox News Radio on the uh, growing failure of these Obamacare exchanges. Stick around. Get more at 971talk.com. 